Hi, I'm Keith Whitelock and welcome to Watercolor Workshop. For today's demo, I'm going to do a little lighthouse. I found this little lighthouse up in Maine and one good thing about this subject is that it's not full of very complicated drawing perspective problems and things like that. It's pretty straightforward. I'll show you how I'd treat that. Here is the sketch for our little lighthouse demo and you'll notice that we do have a lot of dark green area here that we're going to cover and we're going to put a lot of heavy green trees into this uh, background and the only area we're really concerned about saving pure white are just the little sides of the lighthouse itself. The water is going to be fairly simple and light and I've transferred this sketch to the watercolor paper and the first step is to wet this down and just save that little bit of white out so we can do the sky and prime in the water. First I'm going to just take the edge of the brush and work around the areas I want to save and as soon as I've done that I'll go ahead and just soak down the rest of the paper and then watch for it to soak in and get that just right place to run the sky wash. I like to paint my skies rather fast. I find that if I dilly-dally with it too much the paper will change and we'll get maybe not the best results. I'm going to take just a little yellow. This is a, probably a little cadmium yellow and add just a hint of this into our lower sky to add a little warmth. With a painting rather simple like this we do not need a terribly complicated sky so I'm just going to take the edge of the brush and indicate a couple of cloud lines as you see and just fade that up into the top of the paper and just that quick we're going to get out of it and leave that alone. I will take a little of that same sky blue and run it into the area where I'm going to have the water. If that drifts upwards just a little bit into the uh, sky that's perfectly okay. We're working fast. And at this point we just let this paper dry and then we can come back and we'll do some other passages. One thing I do like to do is use a little hair dryer. It may be a bit noisy but it really dries our paper down fast. The first thing I think I want to do is put in a little background for our rocks and for that I'm just going to mix a little yellow ochre, maybe add just a little tiny bit of burnt umber to this wash. And I like to flip the paper upside down for better control and that way I can run this line right across the spot where the water joins the rocks and just cut into the tops. Don't have to be very precise about this at all. We can go back on it later and add some darkening. While it is wet, maybe I will add a little darkening. This is just some burnt umber and it's just barely touched into that damp rock area and it helps establish our water line. We can come back and doctor it up a little bit as we go. Now as we put the sketch back on here we'll notice we've got a good bit of greenery and we can start blocking in some of that greenery now too. For this green I'm just going to use a little bit of phthalo or permanent green and I'm going to toss in a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of burnt umber. I've splayed the brush tip just a little bit and I can get some tree shapes almost instantly by just flipping the brush outwards almost like we would with painting grass. Now 
there's a rock I want to paint around there. I'll just flip some grass up in front of it. We have a choice here about brushes. I can use either a grass comb, I can use a little fan brush, or just by splaying the bristles on this I can just flip it upwards and still get that kind of rough texture I'm looking for. If I add just a small amount of yellow ochre into that, I can shape the top of the rocks. And that wee bit of yellow will really help just with the illusion of some sunshine perhaps on that grass. And we don't have to fill in every last single crumb of that. If a little bit of the paper peeks through here and there, that's fine. Again, we'll just add some yellow ochre to our green and a little burnt umber to darken it. Splay the brush outward so I can take advantage of all those little bristles. Here we'll do a little bit of a close-up so you can see exactly what these little splayed brush tips will do. And in this tree line we're going to want a little combination of both positive and negative space. I'll bring this poor old brush into play. Now we'll mix up more yellow ochre and more brown and more green. I smashed this brush around quite a bit. It really abused this old brush, but it makes great tree brush. Now we can come back into the trees on the shadow side with a much darker green and really start establishing some shapes. Some of that I will drag down into the grass area. We want to emphasize that that woods is dark and somewhat behind this is space. Now we'll also use that same technique to stipple in some grass 
and some smaller bushes and things here. And that will add into the idea that there's some some break in this topography. You'll notice the same dry brush technique that we used in the uh, trees. When we bring it down here, we can use it to break up this grassy area and make the hill look a little more like a hill. I'll darken it just behind these rocks so that they jump out at us. I'm going to take just a little burnt umber and make a light wash here. We're going to use that a little later. And I'm going to take some of that also and mix it with a little bit of the phthalo blue left over until I can get sort of a little bit of a bluish gray color. And that little bluish gray color will be perfect just to go ahead and jump in now and define the shady side of this lighthouse. This is a little round brush. I could use a flat brush for this. But we'll just drop that in. We'll come back later and add some windows and details. You'll notice that now that we have some darks in here, the water looks like it's really dried extra light. I'm going to take a little tiny bit of burnt umber, a little tiny bit of a Antwerp blue, make a little bit of a gray. It's a blue-gray. But it will help me darken this water somewhat. And I'm going to leave it somewhat streaky. We don't want the entire thing repainted. This just bumps up the contrast of our water and we'll put some wave forms in that in a little bit. Next I'm going to take some of that burnt umber that we mixed up previously and now we'll get in here and really try and put that tide mark on these rocks. It serves as a real visual break against the water as well. If I want to soften that hard line, I can come right across it with a little clear water. And that will cause it to flow right up into the higher rocks. And while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to take just a little yellow ochre and really quick wipe it over the light areas in the forest. We'll paint the individual cracks all in the rocks a little later. Right now I'll take just a little burnt sienna. This is a subtle trick. We may even wipe some of this uh, paint away on a paper towel. And just dry brush a little on a few of the rocks.
I have added a little burnt umber to some of my green and I'm just going to define the top of my rocks a little better. I'm also going to take just a little bit of that brown from the rocks and add a hint of it to this water line. Not much. I'm going to take just a little ultramarine with my round brush. This is a number four round. And again, with the paper upside down, test it on the side, I'm going to just hint at some land in the distance on the horizon line. And again, having the paper upside down allows me to run a fairly straight line. I will mention something about this paper. This is 300 pound cold press paper, and it stays pretty flat. If your paper does in fact wrinkle up or something, you can go ahead at any time and take and iron the paper. Just put the cover sheet over it and use a household iron. Works great. I have about a half inch flat that I've mixed a little phthalo blue and a little burnt umber with. I'm going to just dance a few waveforms across in front of this. I'm going to paint kind of fast. I'm not going to get carried away with uh, with a complex water. Now as this paintbrush runs out of paint, I will slowly work my way to the back and make these little waveforms smaller and smaller. I can even fill in underneath using a little dry brush technique. Now for detailing this little lighthouse just on the roof, I'm going to have a mixture of a little bit of burnt umber and phthalo blue. It may look black, but as I've said before, I don't really like to use black paint. It just looks too sooty. It has no life whereas any of these other darker colors work really nice.
while I do have my detail brush out, I can pick at a couple of these little trees just till I'm satisfied with those. Now I'm going to essentially do a little paint drawing. I have some burnt umber with a little ultramarine blue in it because that really does simulate a nice non-green looking dark color. And we'll start painting in the separations between some of these big rocks. Now just to add some definition to some of these rocks on the shadowy side, I'm just going to add a little of that darkness and it'll help make them look a little more three-dimensional. Now we'll put the sketch back over the painting and just take a real quick look at it and I think you'll see that we've kind of put into paint what we had in graphics. We can always go back and pick at a few little things if we want again. Maybe a weed here. Perhaps a little color to a rock there. I think 
just to punch up the water a little, I'm going to put just a few little darker waveforms in. possible that over on this side of the painting certain little waves could be picking up just a hint of that forest so we might get a couple of little dark green in there but we're not going to get carried away with really heavy reflections this time. So I think this gives us just about what we're looking for, so we'll put a little quick signature on this one. Maybe one or two more little touches in the forest itself. But I think this gives us what we're after. I'm rather pleased how the little painting turned out. I hope you enjoyed today's demo. Join me again here on Watercolor Workshop on Pack 14. I'm Keith Whitelock.